Looking for the basics on end-to-end -end encryption, where you can access it and why it matters at all? We've got you covered. What is end-to-end -end encryption? Using the most simple definition, when a message is end-to-end -end encrypted, it means only the message sender and receiver can read it. It's a bit like having some kind of secret code which jumbles up your message in transit. So if person A is trying to get their message to person B and only person B, it'll be readable on person A's device, then totally indecipherable in between until it's specifically made readable when person B opens it. Even the server that hosts it, such as Signal or iMessage, can't decrypt and read what someone wrote. And that's the difference between end-to-end -end encryption and other forms of encryption. While other forms of encryption might protect your message as it goes from your phone to a company's servers and then to its recipient, when it passes through those servers, it's still readable by third parties. If it's end-to-end -end encrypted, that's not the case. End-to-end -end encryption is used by anyone looking for security and privacy in their messaging. Activists might use it to organize. Reporters might need to use end-to-end -end encryption to talk to sources securely. Healthcare providers and banks usually use end-to-end -end encryption, and the list goes on and on. The list likely even includes you, even if you weren't actively seeking it out. Some common messaging platforms also offer forms of end-to-end -end encryption, but most of them don't make that the default. Apple's iMessage, for instance, is end-to-end -end encrypted, and the gold standard for privacy so far is Signal, which is end-to-end -end encrypted by default and actually created the encryption protocol that many other companies use. Other apps, however, like Facebook Messenger and Telegram, require users to make their chat secret in order for it to be end-to-end -end encrypted. Crucially though, that doesn't mean Facebook Messenger and Telegram are end-to-end -end encrypted by default, which sometimes people don't realize. Meanwhile, Zoom was caught falsely claiming it offered end-to-end -end encryption and has since promised to improve its privacy. And it actually followed through on that promise, making end-to-end -end encryption available to all users in October of 2020. Although, like with Facebook Messenger and Telegram, it's not enabled by default. And finally, there's WhatsApp, which Facebook owns. WhatsApp has default end-to-end -end encryption for chats between family and friends, but the rules get murky when it comes to business chats. WhatsApp was going to change its business policy encryption, but due to backlash, they pushed that back to later in 2021. When that change does take place, if a business has active access to third-party vendors, like Facebook, for hosting purposes, your messages to that company may not be end-to-end -end encrypted. Instead, a note within the chat will let you know what kind of privacy you can expect from that particular chat. When news of WhatsApp's privacy update notification got out, Signal saw a huge explosion in downloads and public pressure for more end-to-end -end encryption that could make messaging apps change course down the road. Everyone presumably cares about privacy at least a little bit. But why is end-to-end -end encryption specifically so important? The short answer is that end-to-end -end encryption is the only way to ensure all of your digital communication and data stays out of reach from hackers, the government, corporations, and any other powerful entity that might be trying to access it. And those entities know just how important data can be. A recent report suggests that Apple previously dropped a large-scale user encryption plan due to pressure from the FBI. Apple had told the FBI a few years ago the company planned to give users end-to-end -end encryption on iCloud data. That meant that Apple would no longer be able to access a user's encrypted backup data and turn it over to law enforcement. And the FBI wasn't happy about this. Though, after a meeting between Apple and the FBI, Apple dropped the plan. It's clear that tech companies like Apple are susceptible to pressure of this kind. In the first and second half of 2018, Apple granted about 80% of the US government's requests for data. But in the past, Apple has been back and forth with the FBI over granting access to particular iPhones. Notably, when the FBI couldn't get into the phone of the San Bernardino shooter, there was a long and very public battle over access to the phone, which ultimately culminated with the FBI finding its own way to access the phone and drop its court order against Apple. Of course, national security and public safety need to be top priorities but technology and privacy experts have warned against giving the government an encryption backdoor because it could just as easily be used by bad actors and criminals. And of course, people have a right to privacy. Through it all though, one thing is clear. Powerful parties want the data end-to-end -end encryption can protect and they'll fight to the end to get it.